In June of 1951, passers-by on Wall Street in New York City took notice of a young man who appeared confused, dressed in the fashion of a businessman from the previous century. He stood trembling, but frozen to the spot, in the middle of an intersection. A brush with a taxicab laid him low. An accident which would lead to the discovery of several pieces of evidence, which some now claim to be proof of the existence of time travel. The young man had a full beard and the kind of mutton chop sideburns that had gone out of style ages ago. He was taken by ambulance to downtown hospital in Manhattan. Unfortunately, this was a decade before U.S. hospitals would have intensive care units. This man passed away peacefully before he ever regained consciousness. Then it became the official duty of the NYPD to identify him. A case assigned to Captain Hubert Ream of missing persons. There was the name of a tailor in the neck of the victim's suit coat. A tailor on Broadway of which no one had ever heard. Another label inside his silk top hat from a hat store that went out of business at about the turn of the century. And the following items, which were found in his pockets. A well-worn bronze medal for coming in third place in a shooting contest. A copper token good for one beer marked also with a value of five cents. It bore the name of a saloon which was unknown, even to older residents of the area. A receipt for the washing of a carriage and for the feeding and grooming of one horse, issued by a livery stable on Lexington Avenue in New York, at an address where now stood a high-rise office building. A few Indian head pennies and seven dollars in paper currency, of which the newest banknote was dated 1875. Business cards, which revealed the man's name, Rudolph Fence, as well as his Fifth Avenue address. And finally, a letter postmarked from New Jersey and bearing the cancelled postage of a two-cent stamp. None of these objects showed any signs of aging. Fence's fingerprints were not on record and no one had reported him missing. Captain Ream conducted research into the location on the business card. It was the address of the Buckingham Hotel, which no longer existed. In 1923, the hotel was raised to make way for Saks Fifth Avenue. Rudolph Fence's name was not listed in the 1951 telephone book, but further investigation revealed a listing for a Howard Fence in a much earlier phone book from 1939. The police captain spoke to the residents of Howard's apartment building, who remembered him and described him as an old man with silver hair. He once worked as a short order cook at a diner down the street. However, in 1940 he retired and moved away. Reem was told at the diner that Howard had passed five years earlier, but his widow was living in Florida with her sister. Reem contacted her by phone. She said that her husband's father, Rudolph Fence, had disappeared in 1876 
at the age of 29. He would take a walk in the evening, smoking a cigar, because his spouse believed that smoke was being absorbed by the living room curtains. One evening, when his son Howard was possibly two years of age, he left his family's New York City apartment with a lit cigar, and he never came back. They searched for him in vain, spending a great deal of money on a private investigator. No trace of him was ever found. With renewed interest, Captain Ream delved into ancient missing persons files in the dusty archives of the New York City Police Department. He finally located the pages of a report yellow with age on the disappearance of Rudolph Fentz. The description in the records of Rudolph Fentz corresponded exactly with that of the bewildered man who was struck on Wall Street. But after filing his report, Rehm was compelled by his superiors to close the case as unsolved. The officer barely survived review by internal affairs as to his mental competence, and most of the captain's notes were stricken from the official case file. <laughs>